Baker Mayfield was disrespected all offseason. The entire offseason, it was stories about how he wasn't good enough, and even during the season, there was a lot of calls for his head because he was struggling through injury and being pushed through it by coaching. So we got to see a year of struggling Baker, one in which he wasn't doing his best, wasn't confident, and most importantly, wasn't at his full health. Well now, we get a new story. He got traded to the Carolina Panthers, who are a dumpster fire of a team. And I never thought I'd say this, but he downgraded from the Browns. That's pretty hard to do. But anyway, Baker Mayfield went from a team with a good O-line, a significantly stronger run game, and of course, pretty good receivers, to a team with probably one of the worst offensive lines in the entire NFL now, and a slightly weaker running game. Yes, Christian McCaffrey's good, but in the end, their running game isn't necessarily as strong as something like a Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, and then they're, they even have two good backups after that. They have a much stronger run game in Cleveland than they do in Carolina. And then, of course, you add in the receiver talent, honestly might be better. And then, of course, you can use CMC in the passing game, which is much more effective. But he definitely saw a lot of downgrade and not much upgrade, not to mention the defense for the Panthers still figuring out, and Matt Rule is a pretty subpar head coach. So with all these different changes for Baker Mayfield, how did he fare in week one? Because some people were arguing that it was his revenge game, and people really wanted it to be a big deal. But in the end, it was the Panthers playing the Browns, who didn't even have Deshaun Watson, their starting quarterback. It was a questionable game. So how did Baker Mayfield do? Because his starting stats were pretty meager. His week one stat line was 16 for 27, which is a 59.3 completion percentage, 235 passing yards with two touchdowns, one passing and one rushing, and then one interception. And his numbers weren't terrible, but numbers can lie. Let's get in the film and see, was Baker Mayfield really good? Or are we seeing the same Baker we saw last year? What's up guys? I'm Tyler Coker and I'm your host for today's episode of Today with Tyler. I hope you enjoy. We'll start with the negatives because of course that's what people expected from Baker Mayfield, especially on the Panthers. Uh, if we're being honest, his first half wasn't very impressive. Carolina's offensive line hasn't really improved much despite getting Ikemaquanu, and that pressure got into Baker's head, especially in the beginning of the game. He had many accuracy issues in the first half that stemmed from rushing the throwing motion and getting into decisions that he wasn't ready for, something often found in quarterbacks that are constantly under siege. This inaccuracy led to a brutal interception, one in which he simply sails the ball and misses his target wildly. Although he was under pressure often, and such an errant throw isn't really easy to excuse from a professional quarterback, much less one of Baker's caliber. It certainly didn't help that the Panthers would run a lot of play-action concepts when they hadn't established a run game yet, because yes, Christian McCaffrey is always a threat, but when you haven't established that he's going to do anything this year, and it's week one so we really don't know what he's going to be able to produce, and running play-action plays to Chubba Hubbard as well, you're really not going to get the same effect that they did in Cleveland, which is what Baker Mayfield ran a lot in Cleveland and found a lot of success, because faking a run to Nick Chubb, who everyone knows what they're going to do, is much more effective than faking it to a run game that we don't really know what to expect of yet. Such an oversight only makes a quarterback's job harder, because Matt Rule is scheming up plays that makes him not able to read the field as quickly, he has to take his eyes off the secondary to be able to pretend that he's handing the ball off, a lot of different things, and not even Christian McCaffrey had broken free yet, so there wasn't even the threat of a big play, and so the defense could kind of disrespect the running game to move on to the passing game. So thus, the play actions weren't helping, they were taking up a lot of Baker's time, and then of course, the offensive line was really struggling, which made Baker Mayfield go into a little bit more of what we saw last year when he was injured, when he was rushing the throwing motion, throwing inaccurately, he had another pass that was almost intercepted, and then, of course, the interception, which, if you watch it, you just feel terrible because it was a very bad interception. He just completely missed his target. So he had a lot of early struggles. But how did he react to them after going in the halftime down 7-17? to Carolina didn't just roll over to the Browns, though, and a lot of that is thanks to Baker Mayfield. 
After the first half, Baker showed a significant amount of poise and adaptation, being willing to move on from his past mistakes. He began to stay calm in the face of pressure, which led to accurate, strong throws and really flashed his talent, especially in his arm, since there's a reason he went number one overall. He showed he could stay in the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, and pushing the Browns for a blown coverage for the tight end Ian Thomas, which was a devastating blow and should have been a touchdown in the past, but Ian Thomas is pretty slow. Baker still has the eyes to make a big play and is able to progress to secondary reads, which is really reassuring for a Panthers fan because it's not every day that you get a quarterback that's able to adapt to what the defense is giving him every single play, even when he's under pressure and really not expecting anything like a wide open tight end. Um, despite his poor offensive line, he's going to be able to settle in and deliver that quarterback role that they expect and that they really have needed in Carolina since Cam Newton began to fall off a little bit. He stayed smart with the ball as well, keeping his eyes downfield even when he rolled out of the pocket, whether it was designed, of course, or when he was pushed out of it by free blitzers and people coming off the edges. When doing so, he did actually drop a perfectly placed ball while rolling across his body to Robbie Anderson while down the field, which ended up becoming a 75-yard touchdown. Fantastic, and of course, was great because Robbie Anderson can finally prove that his potential is going to be met this year as well, because he's another one of those guys who has talent, but has never been really able to prove it, especially since he's had Sam Darnold for almost his entire career at quarterback. And Mayfield proved that he doesn't have to throw the ball over the secondary, Two, by taking advantage of a wide open box and rushing a scoring touchdown, which is fantastic. Being able to read the entire field, whether it's a blown coverage, whether you're rolling out and need to adapt and make a big play like Baker did with Robbie Anderson, or if he's just going to run the ball in himself, being able to adapt to all those things, much less be able to hit the little guys like Christian McCaffrey, which he did a couple times during the game, it's very good to see. Overall, I was impressed by Mayfield's Carolina debut. I came in wondering what I was going to see on film just because his stat line kind of didn't suggest he did horribly or that he did well. I'd seen the interception, so I knew something along the way didn't turn out, but in the end, he still did a pretty dang good job. I was worried that this video would kind of turn into me shouting what the media had been shouting for the entire offseason, saying he wasn't very good. But luckily, he showed the traits that he might be able to be good this year and be good for the Carolina Panthers. He turned things around and proved to be a leader for Carolina, and that's exactly what the Panthers need. They have a young, talented roster, which we've been saying for almost two years now. But still, with that young talent, you're going to be able to move them along with a good veteran quarterback, and that's what I think you're going to get from Baker Mayfield. Yes, they can get some offensive line improvements, and especially if their center, Pat F-Line, can really get it going because he did have a couple missed snaps and there was a lot of pressure up the middle. But once they get a couple more offensive line woes out of the way, I do think this offense is going to unlock a new potential. We're going to be able to really see what we can do and what they can achieve as a true offense, especially in an NFC South that's a little weird because, I mean, the Falcons almost beat the Saints, who were supposed to be fantastic, and the Falcons are the Falcons, so... You kind of have an open division, especially if Tampa Bay struggles like they get against Dallas, since it really wasn't a good showing until the defense had been on the field for too long. So I hope you can enjoy this video and see a little bit of what Baker Mayfield was able to do this season. Hopefully he begins to prove me right and continues to develop on that and not fall into his bad habits, but bad habits do die hard, and so I wouldn't be surprised if we see Baker Mayfield continuously have bad quarters, bad halves that are just just like the first quarter in this game, in which it was just pressure and wild throws, missing guys. He had a lot of balls batted down at the line, which isn't necessarily a him problem, but hopefully we'll be able to get ironed out because, you know, that's a lot of incompletions that he didn't really deserve to have that were now incompletions. So I do think Carolina is going to be able to unlock their offense, even in spite of Matt Rule, and so I'm excited to see what they do this year. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed.